Hello, my name is Glenn, and today Victor and I will be introducing you to several new security features available on GKE. Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE, is a fully managed service from Google Cloud, providing you with a simplified and optimized Kubernetes experience. And GKE comes in two distinct modes. There's Autopilot, which is a fully automated, highly optimized, managed Kubernetes platform, and GKE Standard for power users wanting a higher degree of control in their managed Kubernetes. When we think about GKE security, we first think about security at scale and empowering GKE users by making security easy. We focus heavily on managed patching, hardening, and compliance. We have some of the best security experts in the industry building these best practices into our offerings. And we have powerful tools allowing for easy identification, segmentation, and isolation of services and workloads. When you're running on GKE, we've basically taken the responsibility for most of the technology stack. We handle patching and hardening and many layers, all the way from the hardware right up to the Kubernetes system components. And right at the top of that stack are your application containers, and that's what's left for you to patch and secure. This effectively reduces your responsibility when using GKE. But what about securing your container workloads? This comes with its own challenges. Having access to skilled resources that know Kubernetes security can be difficult. The complexity of security topics and multitude of third-party tools and the steep learning curves associated with them, and the heightened overhead that comes with implementing, managing, and using some of these security tools. Google Kubernetes Engine provides many ways to help secure your workloads. Now we are happy to introduce several new GKE security capabilities to make this easier to secure those workloads. A Kubernetes security experience that makes security posture awareness easier. GKE Security Posture Management provides you with out-of-the-box security guidance and recommendations. This gives you visibility and awareness of container workload misconfigurations and container OS layer vulnerabilities. And this is delivered natively as a part of GKE using built-in tools, included in both GKE Autopilot and Standard as a part of the underlying platform at no charge. GKE Security Posture Management assesses your workloads for misconfigurations using open security standards, starting with CNCF pod security standards. It also scans your container images for known, fixable CVE vulnerabilities found in the OS layers. These findings are surfaced to you via a dedicated dashboard, as well as logging Google Cloud operations. This allows easy integration with other security tools, such as SIMS. Finally, GK Security Posture provides severity ratings, as well as remediation advice, to aid in triaging tasks. Victor, can you walk us through a demonstration of GK Security Posture Management? Thanks, Glenn. I would be happy to. We are going to experience GKE security posture management using a fictitious microservices application. We'll start by enabling security posture analysis. We'll then use the dashboard to get an overall sense for our security posture, and then drill down into specific security concerns using filters and views. Last, we'll see security posture concerns in cloud logging and publish those concerns as events to PubSub. Let's get started. Okay, let's jump right in and start by taking a look at our sample application. Now, this is an online boutique. It's got wonderful items like these loafers for your shopping needs. This is a application that's actually comprised of multiple microservices, all of which are hosted within GKE. Uh, they're spread across a variety of clusters and namespaces. And our team here, they're pretty new to security. So they're looking for the GKE team to provide posture management for them. And so GKE's new security posture management is just, just the uh, ticket. So to get started, we're gonna be selecting the clusters we wanna enable. So we'll go ahead and select all three of these, get them started. Now, once we've turned this on, it's gonna take a few minutes for auditing to happen. During this time, our clusters are actually being analyzed for security problems. And let's fast forward to time when the audit is over, and you can see that there are several concerns identified. In fact, about 131 concerns here um, spread across a variety of severity levels. So we try to categorize these into severities. They're spread across all three clusters and all 37 workloads. Now, these are both configuration concerns, so dealing with the pod spec, um, 
and comparing against things like pod spec security standards, as well as vulnerabilities. And these are OS level vulnerabilities. So if we're going to take the next step here, we're going to dive in and drill down and take a look at those concerns in more detail. So the drill down view here offers a lot of ways to slice and dice the data. I can go by concern. I can go by, of course, the namespace uh, that I have defined here. So you can see my services under those namespaces, or I can go by workload. And so here you can see the actual workloads at the top level, the various namespaces and clusters in which they work. I can filter on a variety of fronts, like for example, the concern type. I can also look at uh, severity, of course, and if we're prioritizing, maybe that's the way to go is let's start with, you know, the most critical and high concerns. So drilling down into this particular service, I can see that there are specific problems related to configuration. And in this case, you can see that I have some, some specifications allowing for host access, and I'm given specific remediation instructions, specific allowed values. And what's nice about this is that it ties it directly to the running workload, the cluster it's on, the location of those clusters, and so forth. So I'm, I'm really given concrete next steps into how to fix those. Now let's take a look at a vulnerability. In this case, there's a vulnerability in Zlib, uh, which is an OS package. And I can see it's giving me specific instructions on a fixed version. So if I know where to find this workload, I can go ahead and patch it. And of course, we do that as well. So we're, we're given very specific instructions on where it sits, the namespace, the cluster, the location, and even the images that are affected. So you can see the affected images up there. OK, so if, if we were to now uh, go ahead and uh, try to fix some of these things, we could do that, right? So we can go and look at the specific problems that are being outlined and make changes directly to our spec as we're doing here. Let's talk about logging now. So the security posture feature logs to cloud logging. And I can go in and run a query here and find all of the specific uh, problems that have popped up uh, with respect to security posture management. And what's nice about this is I can create a log sync and, of course, publish those to PubSub for external event consumption. And that's our demo. So to sum it up, GKE now provides foundational Kubernetes security right out of the box, adding security to the long list of things that makes GKE the most automated and scalable managed Kubernetes experience. So we invite you to try GKE Autopilot to experience the ease speed and scale for yourself. Up next, my colleague John is going to talk about what's new with Anthos. Thanks, Victor. Since it debuted in 2019, we've continued to expand the capabilities of Anthos to help Google Cloud customers deploy their modern applications wherever they need to run. Let's take a look at the latest developments with Anthos, which include significant expansions to our multi-cluster automation and platform features. One of the biggest new developments is our new set of cloud services for managing cluster lifecycle. Anthos customers run clusters everywhere, from GCP and other public clouds to on-prem data centers and edge sites. We're pleased to announce that Anthos now includes a fully hosted set of cloud services for managing all these clusters directly from Google Cloud. These services provide the cloud experience you're used to with full UIs and support for common clients like gCloud, while enabling you to manage distributed infrastructure in a consistent and convenient way. Our cluster lifecycle APIs and UIs are generally available for Anthos on VMware, Anthos on AWS, Anthos on Azure, and with a public preview for Anthos on bare metal coming later this fall. We're also happy to announce a number of features that make it easier for you to manage your hybrid fleets of clusters. Over the next few weeks, we'll be rolling out updates to our UI to provide enhanced overview information on the status of your compliance policies, along with CPU, memory, and disk utilization across your fleet, giving you a single place to view the health of your infrastructure at a glance. And as always, all of your fleet's data is collected in CloudOps, where you can search 
and filter to examine any problems you see with any of your clusters. We're also making it easier than ever to connect your clusters with the Connect Gateway, a fully hosted cloud endpoint that enables authorized clients to reach out to any registered cluster using a persistent and encrypted connection. Connect Gateway's integration with Cloud Identity and Google Groups is now generally available, allowing users and service accounts to easily authenticate when managing your distributed infrastructure. Policy Controller is expanding its capabilities to help you ensure your hybrid environments meet the compliance and governance standards you need to run your applications. We're adding new experiences in the UI to help visualize the compliance status of your fleet and highlight violations that need attention. We're also expanding the policy bundles included with Anthos, with packages for policy essentials, service mesh controls, CIS benchmarks, and pod security available now with a PCI DSS bundle coming soon. And finally, we're happy to announce that VM support in Anthos is now generally available. Anthos for VMs provides a unified cloud-backed management plane for VMs running on Anthos Bare Metal. We've extended the Anthos management, configuration, and policy capabilities to give you a consistent interface for running your VM workloads alongside containers. Anthos for VMs includes a VM runtime based on the open source KubeVert technology that we've made easier to install, upgrade, and use. It also includes VM logging and monitoring out of the box, along with significant improvements to networking, making it easier than ever to move VMs between nodes and apply the same network policies and services across both VMs and containers. We're really excited to show you all the new stuff we're bringing to Anthos. Let's open up Cloud Console and take a look at some of the highlights. Today, we're going to take a quick look at a few of the new developments in Anthos by exploring the fleet of clusters and making some changes to our hybrid environment. Here, we see the updated overview page of the Anthos UI. It allows us to see the overall compute, memory, and disk utilization of our fleet and view the status of our policy coverage. Each tile provides a quick overview with links that allow you to dig in further. It looks like our Anthos on VMware clusters are using a lot of compute. Now might be a good time to expand our fleet with more clusters in that data center. Let's take a look. Here we're looking at a list of all the clusters in our fleet, which includes GKE, Bare Metal, and Anthos on VMware clusters. Today, we're going to expand that environment to create some redundancy for our workloads. We've added new cluster management capabilities to Anthos that allow direct management of infrastructure in other public clouds and on-prem right from Google Cloud. So let's try it out by creating another Anthos on VMware cluster. In addition to supporting direct API clients like gCloud, our cluster management service provides a simple UI experience for getting started. Here, we can check that we've got all the prerequisites for setup fulfilled, and then get started by configuring our cluster's basic settings. We'll give it a name and then designate the on-prem admin cluster to associate it with. Now let's configure the networking. We're going to use Anthos on VMware's DHCP support to automatically retrieve node IP addresses. We'll also allocate some site ranges for our pods and services from our on-premises private network. Setting up a load balancer for our cluster is simple since we're using Metal LB bundled directly into Anthos. We'll allocate a range of IP addresses, then configure Metal LB to automatically assign services the IP addresses in that range. Lastly, we'll set our control plane and ingress VIPs. Next, we'll allocate compute and memory on the admin cluster to ensure our cluster's local control plane will have the dedicated resources it needs to run on prem. We'll accept the default setups for logging, monitoring, and the vSphere storage driver and turn off anti-affinity groups since they aren't required in this architecture. And finally, we'll configure our node pool by giving it a new name and choosing our OS image. In this case, Ubuntu Container D. And with that, we're ready to create our cluster. While our cluster is being created, we can view the status in the details page. Since this process is going to take a few minutes, let's skip ahead a little bit. Our node pools are just about to finish coming up. And there it is. 
a fresh cluster running in our data center created by our new cloud-based cluster management service. Let's go take a look at the workloads running on our cluster. Looks good so far, but now let's add a few more of our own. Anthos makes it super simple to connect to any of your clusters, no matter where you are, with a persistent cloud-hosted endpoint called Connect Gateway, which is now generally available with full support for Cloud Identity and Google Groups. Here, we're accessing it through Cloud Shell. With a single gcloud command, I can get a kubectl connection to any cluster in the fleet and start deploying applications. It's very convenient for automating processes like continuous delivery too. Now that I have a connection, I can view the nodes and retrieve the namespaces on the cluster I just created. I can also view the status of the connect agent that makes this connection possible. It creates a persistent encrypted gRPC tunnel between my cluster and Google. Now we'll deploy our online store application by creating a namespace, adding it to the service mesh, and deploying our manifest. When we return to our workload list, you can see our application is now up and running. Let's check out the front end service. If we dive into one of the pods, we can take a look at the logs and get a quick glance at the most recent messages. Now, as we return to our newly created cluster, you can see it's just as easy to edit and upgrade the cluster via the new cluster management service as it was to create it. Let's go ahead and scale out the node pool to ensure our app has plenty of room to handle new traffic. We'll select the node pool, click resize, and bump the number of nodes from three to four. So our new cluster is scaling out in the background and we're ready to handle more traffic. Looks like our work is done for now. There's lots more new stuff to explore in Anthos, including our new generally available support for running VMs and our expanded library of policy bundles. I hope you'll head over to cloud.google.com to check it out for yourself. On behalf of Glenn and Victor, we hope you enjoyed this presentation and thanks for joining us today.